What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I review Splatoon 3 for the Nintendo Switch. With Splatoon 3 having the largest release in Japan for any other Nintendo Switch game, it was an easy choice to review this game and discuss my overall feeling towards this new installment. When Splatoon 3 was first announced back in February of 2021, most fans felt this was too soon to the release of Splatoon 2 especially when it seemed that this new game did not show too much in the trailers. Does Splatoon 3 surpass the success of the previous installments? Should it be considered Nintendo's best multiplayer game? And is it worth buying? In my review, I give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in my final verdict. Let's start off with the good. Overall, the gameplay of Splatoon 3 is very smooth. I feel that Nintendo has found the perfect combination of gameplay mechanics and movements that make this game seem very fluid and easy to pick up and play. What Splatoon 3 does very well, which is hard to come by for any FPS title, is the great combination between social and ranked style of matches. Most FPS fans can understand that when playing games like Halo Infinite, Call of Duty, Apex, and Fortnite, there's a level of sweatiness that comes in these style of games. Basically meaning that if you aren't on your A game, you will not be successful. Platoon 3, however, makes it so that anyone can pick up and play, but also rewards those players that strategize and learn the pro tactics. The basic premise of the game is that each weapon you equip has its own core styles of combat, while providing an ink grenade and special ability that seems easy enough to understand and get used to playing. This game prioritizes the social function of old Splatoon titles Titles, and you can see how far Nintendo has come to expand what fans loved the previous games and brought to this new one. Building on the last segment, I really love the weapons. Platoon has always been known for introducing some wacky and interesting ways to combat your opponents. Whether it's the handheld paint guns, hydro paint turrets, or katana brushes, Splatoon 3 has found a way to make a very unique game feel more interesting with the many ways to play. Each weapon has its advantages and drawbacks which really opens up the strategy that goes with this game. Each weapon carries a specialty grenade as well as a special ability. The grenades each vary in purpose and effectiveness, but the best part has to be the outrageous special moves. Some abilities are straightforward in creating a bubble shield or wielding paint bazookas, while others are over the top where you can wield a mini tank or shoot long range missiles. The booyah bomb literally has you go super saiyan and drop a spear bomb in the middle of the map. That's just a good time. The customization of this game was also positive, I really like the fact that you can add multiple types of clothing and accessories to your character with the added benefit of increasing your stats and attributes. For social players, you can make your character look as outrageous as you want, and for the competitive player, you can plan out your wardrobe to increase certain abilities. This opens up the replayability of the game to be accessible to more than one particular group which is the ultimate goal of a multiplayer game. I'm looking forward to seeing more attire added to the game in future expansions, just because I know that Nintendo will be looking to expand its designs to include other IPs. Lastly, let's talk about the story. Generally, I thought the story was pretty solid. You're continuing the adventure from the previous titles when you're recruited to join the new Squid Break Splatoon by the former Captain Cuttlefish. According to the developer, the story features over 70 stages spread across different islands, each with a growing threat of a mysterious fuzzy ooze. Each level has you complete different challenges and it acts as a very good tutorial to learn the different types of weapons and movements you can use in multiplayer. The different islands each have its own layout and theme with it. This experience gives players some context of the world of Splatoon 3 that is currently taking place. I really enjoy the boss battles in this game. Relatively easy, but the different attack styles and very Nintendo-esque methods of fighting. The different art styles of the missions and characters were very vibrant and goofy, which always fits these types of games. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. One of the major negatives I have so far is the issues with connectivity and matching with friends. It seems that in the early days since release of Splatoon 3, they've had some issues with the servers and handling the mass number of players that have joined the game's population. Nintendo has not yet mastered making servers that can handle this many people joining a lobby. There were times where I would load into a lobby and my connection would time out a few times before connecting into a game. The method for joining with friends also needs to get revamped as well. It should not be this difficult to invite friends to play a multiplayer game in 2022. The way that Splatoon 3 formats inviting friends to games is basically tedious. I have to start a lobby and open a room for friends to join. Then after a game ends, you need to pick the option of keep going. If one of your friends doesn't pick the option fast enough, then they will be kicked out of the lobby. It's unfortunate because I feel that Nintendo has really done a great job in establishing a multiplayer game that promotes playing with others, but it feels that like they have been unable to effectively get players to actually join each other on a daily basis. One of the last issues I have is that there are a lack of maps at the launch of Splatoon 3. 
In the Nintendo Direct, they had mentioned that there would be 12 maps for the release, which included 5 new maps and 7 from the previous titles. The biggest issue I have is that we don't have more maps in rotation throughout our playthroughs. Currently, maps are grouped in pairs, and every 2 hours, we will see a rotation. I think for a game that uses mainly older maps, it would be better to at least have more original maps in rotation to keep the game feeling fresh. The maps are solid, but at times, it feels like you're playing the same map several times in a row, which can hurt the experience. Add content in both maps and modes, and I will be happy. Overall, I think Splatoon 3 has both positives and negatives. The gameplay feels smooth and is easy to pick up for any gamer. The various weapons and play styles makes the game feel fresh with multiple ways to tackle a situation, giving a boost to the replayability. With added customization, increasing stats, is an added strategy to the game and the story is fun with a lot of levels to fully enjoy the experience. However, at times the lack of maps and modes with occasional mishaps and connecting to lobbies did dampen the experience in some ways. Hopefully Nintendo can update Splatoon 3 with more content and fix these issues soon because they have a fun game here. Overall, I'm giving this game an 8.7 out of 10. Nintendo has made a great multiplayer game that is a lot of fun to play and worth the purchase. Nintendo has found ways to improve on their already successful formula and expand on the series, making it feel larger than before. Should this game be considered Nintendo's best multiplayer title? That's a tough question. If they were to add more content, give more weapons to the player, and, and fix matchmaking issues, I'd say it's a current possibility. If I had invited my family over for a game night, I feel like I'd still pick Smash Bros. Ultimate but Splatoon 3 is definitely a must play. Thank you everyone for watching, and please, if you like this type of content, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace.